you really are against the third people voting third party, you can advocate for ranked choice voting. But isn't it interesting in Maine when the citizenry passed it on a ballot initiative, the legislature fought against it and tried to overturn it. They had to go to court to get it reinstated. So why are the legislators, the people already in power against ranked choice voting? Because then they have nobody to blame. That's my theory. I don't know why it seems stupid that they would be against it. Well, they are already in power, and the system that got them into power yes, is right. the existing system. That's so right. they might have to cede power to someone else if uh, they. But you would think the Democratic Party in general would be for this, right? Because it would take away their spoiler effects. But that's not what they want. They like the spoiler idea because then you can shame people away from voting for a third party. And that third party actually gaining a lot of votes, like in the national election, if Jill Stein would have got 5% of the vote, she would have then qualified for federal funds in her next camp or the Greens in their next presidential campaign. And they don't want that, right? What do you, th you think that's a possibility? Why would they be against it, Steve? I, I don't know. I mean, you're right, because it makes no logical sense because they're not gonna lose in fact, it's going to theoretically help them win, right? I if, think well, yes. if you're a Democrat, it right? would help them. It'll That's help the whole point. I think they won't it's harder to effect. rig. Yeah. It's harder to rig? Oh, That's maybe. why I think there isn't that, you know what I mean? They already know how mm. they're going to control this, maybe. you know? So, I mean, and look what's going on with Tim Canova in Florida with Debbie Washerman Schultz. And there's no, like, he can't get anybody on board because they're all a part of the machinery to keep this suppression going. How do you want to add to that? No, know? so a judge agreed with Tim Canova that the supervisor of elections committed a, a, a legal fraud by destroying the ballots because Tim said he won. And he wanted to examine the ballots. Well, by law, they're supposed to keep those paper ballots for a certain amount of time. I think it's 12 months. Well, they destroyed the ballots prematurely. A judge agreed with Tim Canova. He thought the Republican governor would replace that election commissioner. Turns out the Republicans and Democrat donors don't want Tim Canova. So they both, now they're colluding to screw over Tim Canova, even if, if he runs as an independent. That's what's happening right now in Florida. The donor class, which owns both political parties, don't want Tim Canova. To, they like Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She does the bidding of the fossil fuel industry, Wall Street, and the payday lenders. That's why they love her. They don't want Tim Canova to kick her out. So that's why they came together to still screw him. Because the donor class wins if the Democrat wins or the Republican. The only time the donor class loses is when the independent wins. So you know, I thought about a little bit more while you're while you're speaking. I think the reason why they're against um, ranked choice voting is that um, it gives third parties more relevance. Like, yes, that, you know their votes ma now matter. Yeah, it counts. So they don't want that. You can't exclude them from the debate. You can't exclude you know, them from the yeah. debate. Yeah. I mean, you can. They still would they, anyway, yeah. probably. But you're, it's it's hard hard to justify. But also, you know, when there's a third party, when there's when when you have Jill Stein. You can focus all your energy on saying it's Jill Stein's fault that, yes. that, that we didn't win, yeah. and you, you don't have to look at yourself. You don't have to blame yourself, and also you're not responsible. I mean, the, it's if if you if you win, then in theory you're supposed to deliver on your campaign promises. But if you lose and can spend your time blaming the third party candidates well, I, I and voters, I don't think they want to lose. I think they want to win. I don't. I think that uh, that is well down in their list of concerns. Well, no. For the party, yes. For the party operators, absolutely. But I think for the individual who's running, that person wants to right, win. Right, but it's not right? the individual who's running whose choice about whether the party supports ranked choice voting. Right, um, but you know, but for everyone involved, by not having ranked choice, you really only have two realistic options, right? And they, and they love that. They love that exclusivity. It's me or this other person. If you want to throw your vote away over there, fine, go do it. But it's really us. And I think they like that setup. And here's another yeah. reason why they would do this. Because just what happened in uh, Michigan, so there was a progressive running, uh, and he and he had an uh, an Arab name, and so what what did the corporations do? They got another guy with an Arab name to run as a progressive, even though he was fake and phony, and he did take some of the vote from that guy, and that guy lost. He would have won if that third party. Progressive was did, well. I mean, so it, was, it was close. It's right here. Advocates of ranked choice voting raised the benefits of alternative voting schemes. When after Michigan's recent governor's race, the results suggested that if the third party place candidate who branded himself as a progressive had been reallocated in the ranked choice system, Abdul Sayed, a genuine progressive, might have come within arm's reach of winning. So it just works the other way. The the establishment can use a third party person to screw over the progressive. Mm -hmm. So they just bring it up, split the vote, and that so it works for them both way. If they lose. They get to blame the third party, and if a third party gets strong, they just go ahead and get somebody to split it for them. And we also we also have a system where frequently you'll have, like for example, Republicans 
oh, the Republican Party, the local GOP, will support a third party candidate on the other side, like the Green yeah. Party. And there, there's no, you would never design a system where it's going to be in the Republicans' best interest to have someone who's super progressive running. And same deal, and, and, and Democrat, I mean, look, Hillary Clinton, we, I, I believe, Jimmy, isn't there, weren't there intimations that Hillary Clinton had actually tried something called the Pied Piper strategy? <laughs> like, there's no reason why the Democrats should be at all involved in who the Republicans are picking and have a, a vested interest in that and be able to you know, promote that. That should, you know, that, that should be entirely up to the Republicans. The, the Democrats shouldn't be promoting Gary Johnson and the Republicans shouldn't be promoting Jill Stein. It's a effed up system yeah, if I, that's I, happening. I, I think bottom line, ranked choice voting gives more voice to the people and they don't want that. Right, that's exactly right. They don't want that. So, so they, they, I mean, even if they lose, it's okay as long as they can control the outcomes. They want to keep- they can. And ranked yeah. choice voting legitimizes third party voting. Yeah. And they don't want to legitimize yeah. third party voting at all. They'd rather spend the time like Hillary Clinton did in her book after 2016. They'd rather spend time shaming third party voters rather than embracing solutions to the spoiler effect. That's, that's, that's and, very and, conspicuous. And can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so after the election, Jill Stein, of all people, spent a bunch of money trying to get a recount in some of those In Michigan, states. Wisconsin, yeah. right? And then the Democrats put a stop. Well, why did they do that? Why did they stop that? I that don't know. I, you know what? I don't know. But I do know that Hillary Clinton was on board with that when it first happened. That she, w am I wrong about this? I think this? so, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's very interesting. People still smeared Jill Stein over that, over wanting election integrity in Michigan. Why, why would they smear her over no, that? The whole thing is weird because like, why, why would Jill Stein care that much about Hillary Clinton's outcome if she was just a selfish person trying to you know, make it all about her? Or if she's a Russian... Tool, why right. is she trying to, I mean. She wants to overturn the effects of, right. the, of yeah. the, yeah. So, so she goes through all this trouble to help Hillary, and the Democrats are like, no thanks, we'll just take <laughs> right. the loss. Yes. It's weird. Yes. That's one thing, look, Democrats are, you know, they get a lot of crap for a lot of things they do, but one thing they are really good about doing is conceding elections gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore got a lot of credit. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it's true. Like the Republicans were, were falling all over themselves to credit Al Gore for how graciously he conceded to, to George Bush uh, after the Supreme Court decision. And uh, that's a feather in their cap. We've come to another end of the aggressive progressives, but you haven't heard the end. There's a lot more to this show and you can get it earlier when it actually drops. So the news is timely. What do you got to do to have that happen? Go to tytnetwork.com slash join. Become a member.